Hello, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about my number one thing you should be focusing on when it comes to performance driving, whether you're a new or experienced driver. Hello, my name is David Pittard. I'm a Nürburgring champion, international racing driver and driver coach with over 20 years experience in the motorsport industry, as well as all round petrol head. Today's video is another part of the How To Motorsport series, which looks in depth at some of the key topics to make you a faster and safer driver out on circuit. Today I'm going to talk you through my number one piece of advice when it comes to performance driving, vision. I'm going to talk about what it is, what I teach, and then we're going to run through some worked examples of what the correct theory is. Driving a car safe, fast and well requires you to use your vision. Fairly useless advice really, unless you're this guy from Top Gear. Come on, come on, come on, gas, 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 gas. Come on! Ah, get in! Oh, mate. Joking aside, using your vision correctly can make you a safer, faster and more aware driver. When working with new students on circuit, the first thing that I try to really emphasise is vision. For so many years of driving on the road, traditionally, people end up driving with blinkers on and looking down at the floor, barely five metres ahead of their car. There are a number of reasons for this. Uh, on the road, generally there are slower speeds, there are rules on the road which are defined where uh, a car should go, where cars should come from, etc. So there are set places to look, as well as there are more immediate threats to the driver, closer to the driver than there are further away. <clears throat> when it comes to general driving on the road or performance and circuit driving, training your vision correctly can help you be safer, more efficient and on, in a circuit environment faster as well. By training your vision to be looking further down the road, you'll be able to take in more information sooner. You'll be able to process that in the same speed that which your mind would normally process. However, you're taking that information in sooner and then you'll be able to make more correct decisions because of the information that, uh, the more information that you're taking in. I'll tell you what's wrong about people's driving techniques of looking five meters ahead of the car that they're driving. My driving technique that I try to teach for performance and driving is looking 50 meters ahead of the car you're driving. This relies much more on your central vision looking 50 meters ahead of yourself, so that's where your focused vision is, but actually where the training comes in is training your peripheral vision, so not your direct line of sight, to actually take in and process more information that is closer to you. That allows you to, for your central vision to stay focused ahead, taking in information further ahead of the car, whilst your peripheral vision takes care of everything that is then inside the 50 metres to the front of the car. This technique is first quite alien because it really feels like you're looking completely up in the sky and you can't see what's immediately around you. However, you can train your vision to take in that information and be comfortable with it. Training your vision to take in more information further ahead and around you is safer on the road. This is because you can spot danger sooner, like cars pulling out, cars changing lane, people crossing the road, etc. This will allow you to make safer decisions, both for their sake and your sake. It will allow you to make more efficient decisions because you won't be accelerating only to brake hard again because you've seen a car pulling out last minute. It will allow you to spot that, uh, that danger sooner, back off sooner, so you're not accelerating and decelerating so hard. On the track with a high average speed, things are going to be coming at you sooner. Your braking point, your turning point, your apex and exit points, they're all going to be coming at you very quickly. So the further you can look down the road, the earlier you can spot them, the earlier you can start to process information about them. So let's jump into a worked example of this vision technique. So this is me using my head cam uh, from when I drove the Century Motorsport BMW M4 GT4 car at Donington Grand Prix circuit and the corner we're going to use is the final hairpin which leads onto the start finish straight. It's quite a tricky corner because it's a relatively blind corner as the track drops away. It's a relatively blind entrance so vision is particularly important to pick up the apex and also the exit point. So that's where we're going to start. So in this example which you can then apply to all corners I'm going to break it down into four points of a vision and approach. So as you're approaching the corner you want to be looking for your rough braking point, your braking area, your also your turn in point as well but you don't want to be fixed on those points and looking down to the right hand side where the curb is, you just want to have them in your peripheral vision. 
Where your central vision actually needs to be focused is the apex point and then also your exit marker as well. So those are the four points we need to break down for each corner. So at this point when I'm approaching the corner, I'm roughly around 200 meters from my breaking point. At this point here, I will be looking to where my breaking point is, which is the beginning of the curb on the right hand side. So I'm just about scouting it out in my central vision. I can then transfer that information from my central into my peripheral vision to, for when I actually get to my breaking point. I roughly know where my turning point is going to be, but I'm going to rely more on looking towards the apex and the exit to get, determine my turning point as opposed to, again, fixating on a specific turning point. So this point here, that's the beginning of my, the curb on the right hand side. However, this is not something that I will be fixated on. At the moment, I'm actually looking to the inside of the McLaren that's ahead of me. I'm looking towards where my apex will be. However, as mentioned, this is quite a tricky corner as the track drops away so much. Being fixated on my apex, that gives me my stopping distance. The brain is able to calculate how much brake pressure is needed for you to stop the car sufficiently and then roll sufficient speed from the turning point to the apex. Just like stopping at a traffic light, your brain is able to determine how much brake pressure to use to stop at the light. Now, as the apex is coming towards the left of the car, and this is what I really love about the head cam, it illustrates me actually looking out of the side window. That's how far around the corner I'm looking. I'm not fixated on the McLaren ahead of me. I'm not fixated on the track ahead of me. I'm actually looking out of the side window here to spot my apex sufficiently early enough. Therefore, I can judge how much steering input I need to add to make my apex and also how much brake pressure I need to sufficiently make that radius without overworking the tires too much. Now that I've committed to my apex, I'm immediately looking to the far left hand side again, almost out of the, uh, the driver's window here towards where the tires and the blue and white barrier meet. That's my exit reference point. That's me picking up my vision to look at how much track I have available to me. That then determines how, how much and how early I can get on the throttle and how I will unwind the steering lock to utilize all of the road and carry that speed onto the start finish straight. So to run through those points, looking towards where your breaking point is, look to the apex, and then as soon as you've committed to your turn, look up to the exit to then determine your exit point. There are a number of ways to practice this technique. Number one is to watch onboard videos on the internet. So when you ride on board, don't be looking five meters ahead of the car, train yourself to start looking 50 meters ahead. At first it will feel quite alien, but if you're just riding on board with, a, with an onboard, you don't have to think about the driving element. You can purely focus on where your vision is, focusing on that, that point that's always one step of where you are out on circuit. The next step after watching onboards is to jump on a simulator. So using the sim, that gives you a controlled, safe environment to then again start lifting your head up and using your vision to start to put into practice that technique. So you have to focus on obviously all the driving elements of braking, steering, gears, accelerating, etc. But then you're just trying to include that vision aspect and, and looking down the road and spotting your points earlier than you currently are. If you've given yourself an introduction and you feel comfortable with watching on boards in the correct manner and also using it on your sim as well, this is something that can be practiced on the road as well. It's very easy to raise the vision at the slower road speeds that you will be traveling to look for your turning point, your apex point, and your exit point on the road that you're driving, all comfortably well below the speed limit. And this is actually a good training ground for when it comes to driving out on circuit because everything's happening, happening a bit slower, so you give your mind a chance to process and start to change your theory of driving, of raising your vision up, which will only help you when you then get on the circuit. I hope you found this video interesting. Make sure you give it a like if you do. If you want to find out more information about vision and how you can improve your driving ability, please make sure you head to my website and get in contact if you'd like to book a training day with me. 
this continuation of the How To Motorsport series with me on my channel, so make sure that you stay subscribed for plenty more videos like this to come. Whilst you're here, why don't you check out these two POV point of view onboard videos here so you can start to practice the techniques that I've explained to you here, and then also make sure you stay subscribed up here. Until next time, it's done.